Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Danish Virtual Association with this uh, little live feed, uh, where we happily can uh, present you for Mr. Tim Abbott from uh, England to talk about and answer questions uh, on uh, the psychic senses. Og jeg laver lige en hurtig dansk introduktion også. Velkommen her til Dansk Virtuel Sammenslutning. Og det er den her lille live på en, på en times tid, hvor vi har inviteret Tim Abbott fra England med som, øh, til at, at fortælle lidt om de psykiske, de klaverante sanser. Og hvad hedder det? Svar på spørgsmål, spørgsmål øh, omkring dem også. Til at starte med vil vi rigtig gerne lige høre jer, høre jer derude, om I kan høre og se os. Fordi det er jo ret vigtigt, når vi laver de her små live. Så skriv gerne lige i kommentarerne, om I kan høre og se os, så vi er helt med på den også. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't hear us and see us, please uh, uh, write a comment to, to let us know. Let's see here. Så hvis I... That's great. Okay, it seems like everybody can see and hear us, Tim. So welcome, uh, Mr. Tim Abbott, to the Danish Spiritual Association for this uh, uh, about one hour uh, about the psychic senses. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, Jack, and... Uh... It's a pleasure to be in the company of the Danish people and whoever else is uh, joining us this evening. It's always uh, a lovely subject, the subject we're going to be looking at this evening. Those uh, you said, the spiritual senses there. Mm. Mm, yes. And, and and we can say uh, welcome to a few people that have joined us so far. We have uh, mm. uh, Crystal Exposen, we have uh, Lisbeth, we have... Uh, um, We have Liz, we have uh, Annalise, we have uh, 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 quite a few people joining our, uh, us at the moment. So welcome uh, everybody. And I have to say a great thank you to Lawrence Saville and Pool Christian Spiritualist Church that is helping us out tonight uh, uh, with this StreamYard uh, uh, live because there have been some uh, challenges uh, for my profile that have been kind of banned from from facebook in in several ways so um but that's how it things sometimes are so tim are you ready to uh, uh, answer a lot of questions talk a lot about the psychic senses i certainly am and i have to echo your remarks there that we have to thank lawrence and the full uh christian spiritualist church for hosting us this evening that's very kind of them to do so and uh, we were just talking there before we came on air how we should be supporting each other and uh, especially as like-minded people spiritual people there and and we think of the war that's uh, exploded in our faces of late in the ukraine there uh, with the ukrainian people and the russian people and you know one of the things we can do to help is turn to our spiritual beliefs, turn to the power of prayer for both sides. I'm not just saying about one side here. They are all our brothers and sisters. And, you know, uh, maybe even closer to you, Jack, in Denmark, but for me in England, it's only a couple of hours away on a plane. Uh, so it's very sad that this is going on and we send our thoughts out to all those who are involved in it. But yeah. yes, coming back to your statement, I am ready and raring to talk. Wonderful, wonderful. And that's just so lovely. So first of all, we are going to talk, uh, have a little chat about the psychic senses. And as I said before, you're welcome with your questions and, and we will try to answer the questions uh, during the next hour uh, as well. If you're not comfortable with uh, writing the questions in English, you are uh, uh, welcome to, to, to write it in, in Danish and I'll just translate it to Tim, so no problems. So, Tim, the psychic senses. What can you tell us about the psychic senses? Um, well, I have to tell you, it's been a gorgeous day here in the Midlands today. A little bit chilly, but the sun's been out. 
and uh, as, as you know, Jack, because we are friends, that um, maybe about eight months ago we lost our dog to the screw. I know that. And but Poor just Alfie. before, absolutely, little Alfie boy. But just before he went, maybe about a month before, we we um, introduced another dog into our family. So every now and then, of course, he uh, has to go out in the garden. And so I opened the back door and off he went and uh, he'd been out for a while. So I, I went outside to see where he was. And immediately outside uh, uh, the back door, there, there's a table and chairs. And I sat down because I could feel the warmth of the sun. And um, because, of, because of the winter and, and the cold weather, I hadn't really paid a lot of attention to our back garden. But I just sat in the chair for a moment and my physical senses started to become activated. I began to look at the, at the, at the buds beginning to come through on the plants. We have a, a rose garden. We have roses on three sides of our garden. And um, uh, the leaves are beginning to come now on our little plum tree. And we have different plants. And you could see the spring life within the plants and, and the tree and the roses beginning to come to life. But, but, I, but I hadn't noticed it. I hadn't noticed it because I hadn't chosen to look. I hadn't chosen to sit in my garden and smell through the physical senses there. But in this moment, when I was waiting for little Teddy boy to do what he needed to do in the garden, I took the time to allow my physical senses to embrace the garden. And it was a beautiful few moments. And I think sadly within, uh, uh, if we look at um, the spiritual senses, uh, the spiritual senses really are an extension of our sensitivity that we, and it's how we perceive the spiritual energy. And it's important that I underline that phrase, the spiritual energy. Because that doesn't necessarily mean the spirit world. And I'll come back to that. And we, um, and through our sensitivity and awareness there, it's how we perceive uh, the very makeup of the energy. Um, for example, uh, this can be experienced both with those that we understand as psychics. I believe you call that um, those people who use that wonderful psychic craft sometimes as clairvoyance uh, in Denmark, Jack. Yeah. Uh, and in the craft of mediumship, the spiritual senses will be activated. So just like when I spoke about me being in the garden, using my physical senses to attune to my garden and the beauty of it, it's how we perceive uh, the spirit world and the psychic uh, faculties, um, the psychic crafts, uh, through our spirit, uh, through our spiritual uh, senses, there. Um, uh, so both psychics and mediums will will achieve this. For example, uh, the the this uh, and I and I view, believe very hard, uh, strongly that the, the the psychic crafts are beautiful crafts. Definitely. I choose to have gone down the mediumship road. I, I, I interact with this with the spirit world, but I do that through my psychic awareness now um the, the tarot the 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 uh, crystal ball reader uh, if you think of the classical line that the crystal ball reader says I'm, I'm focusing on the crystal ball and there's a mist building in the crystal oh and i can see a face in the crystal clairvoyance the ability to see spiritual energy nothing to do with the spirit world it's what they it's through their focus uh, on the energy that the crystal ball is giving off, uh, that spiritual energy, and through their psychic ability, they are beginning to become aware of the information within the energy there. There's no intelligence behind it. It is a psychic faculty. And in the same way, the medium who is interacting with a discarnate spirit, a communicating spirit, and that communicating spirit will express thoughts through the power of telepathic, mind-to-mind -mind communication there and there was a coming together between the energy of the medium and the energy of the communicator and there's that blending 
So there is a blending of energies and a blending of minds. And as that communicating spirit expresses, let's say it's granddad, expresses his thoughts. I am granddad. My name was George. I died of cancer. The medium through their sensitivity and awareness will be aware of that energy and be aware of the shift that it makes within their energy because there is a blending of energies and they will perceive that information that is the very makeup of that thought process, that energy, uh, through the faculties uh, of their mind, but through those spiritual senses. Now, there are six senses. You, you stop me when you want me to stop, Jack. Yeah. If there's questions, but there are six senses. And in many different schools of mediumship and psychic awareness, many different terms, titles, if you like, are used to highlight those six. But maybe I could uh, share with our listeners the, the six most commonly used, or that I believe is the six most commonly used um, phrases throughout different schools of, of mediumship or, or, or psychic awareness there. So number one, clairvoyance. Uh, you notice they are French terms. We can come back to that. Uh, clairvoyance. The ability to clearly see spiritual energy. Again, not necessarily the spirit world. The psychics who are not connected to the spirit world experience uh, clairvoyance as well. Clairaudience, audio, clairaudience, to clearly hear the spiritual energy. Uh, clairsentience, to clearly sense the spiritual energy. Clairaugustience. Uh, to clearly taste the spiritual energy. Uh, clear olifractions, to clearly smell the spiritual energy. You may have heard mediums saying things like, I know your father was a smoker because I can smell the tobacco. Um, uh, and clear cognosians, which is quite a, a, a modern uh, terminology for a particular sense. And that is where when you when the medium or the psychic is not aware of what spiritual sense has been used in an experience so for example maybe a medium would say i know your father's name is john but at the same time the medium saying i don't know how i experienced that i didn't clairvoyantly see it i didn't clairsentiently feel it i didn't clairaudiently hear the name john i just know now back in our day uh, jack we would have called that a gut feeling yeah. But so we now put a lovely phrase, clear cognosians, to clearly know uh, in the information. So both psychics and mediums will use the spiritual senses. And the challenge comes, uh, and you know, Jack, you and I have been teaching students mediumship and, and psychic practices for many years now. And, and, the, and the challenge comes. Is, is acceptance of those six senses. And quite often, uh, both you and I will hear students saying things like, yes, but I don't hear the spirit world. And the minute a, a student of psychic crafts or of mediumship ex, uh, uh, acknowledges that, I know I cannot hear the spirit world. I cannot hear the information. We have to remember that we we uh, perceive uh, these experiences through the faculties of our mind. We acknowledge it in our mind. So if we deny it in our mind, I cannot hear the information. I cannot hear the, the spirit world. And then you simply won't. You simply won't. Not because you can't, because you're denying it for yourself. And so where the spiritual senses are concerned, <laughs> You, we very much have to be of an acceptance of those senses. And, and I always give this example, uh, Jack. If you were walking in a beautiful park with your partner uh, and your partner said, oh, look at that beautiful flower. Your first thought would not be, oh, I'm not going to be able to see it. I can't see it. I'm not going to be able to see that flower. You're not, gonna, you're just, you're not even going to think about if, if your eyes would let you down or not. You would simply look at the flower 
and to see its beauty without questioning questioning the ability of your eyes giving you the experience of seeing the flower. Yet when it through this through this physical sense of sight. Yet when it comes to the spiritual senses, we question them. We question them. Yet we don't question the physical senses. And if we can have the same <coughs> approach to the spiritual senses like we do the physical senses, your ability as a psychic or your ability as a medium would simply blossom so much because they are aids, tools that we use, psychic tools that we use within the craft uh, of mediumship or psychic awareness to enhance the experience. Yeah. And when we're talking about the senses, um, uh, we uh, we might need to mention the uh, the way we use the senses. We can uh, like when we are seeing uh, spiritual energy, we can see it objective or, or, or subjective. Absolutely. Because I know from students myself that have students that says, "Oh, I see spirit," or "I can't see spirit," but, but, but mainly because I haven't realized that they can see it subjective, they don't see it necessarily with the physical eye. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. You're so so right there, Jack. And that doesn't mean uh, subjective, as in within the within the 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 mind's eye, if you like, submerged within the mind, objective outwardly. And that doesn't mean physical phenomena, although you're seeing. Uh, for example, a communicating spirit. Again, let's say Grandad. You're seeing Grandad over the other side of the room, the uh, the room that you're standing in. It doesn't mean it's a physical phenomena. It, Grandad hasn't materialized. You are perceiving it on a spiritual level, but subjectively. Uh, absolutely, Jack. And you can do exercises to enhance both of those, both subjective and objective. And they are just two different perspectives of that sense in this case clairvoyance and one's not greater than the other it's just how you perceive in the moment in the moment. exactly Abs absolutely Jack. a very very good point um i love it and, and funny enough of late my when i when i first started mediumship as a young man i would say certainly 70 percent of my perception of clair of within clairvoyance was objectively uh, perceived, um, and then and then that diminished. But of late, it seems to be coming back. Uh, just just naturally, I'm not trying to do anything. Although you can encourage encourage it through different exercises, it's just naturally coming back here, and uh, it's wonderful when it does. I was doing recently. I was doing a, a demonstration in Norway, and there was a lady sat in the doorway. Not from the spirit world, in the physical sense. Everybody had gathered in, in this church, and um, she was sat at the door to my to my right, uh, just in case there was any late people coming in. She could see them in uh, safely to to a seat while I was demonstrating. And as I was demonstrating, I could see a gentleman objectively stood by the side of her. Subjectively, I could hear him saying. Uh, Claire audience uh, that he was her husband and clairvoyantly subjectively he showed me his job he was a like an inspector in a factory overseeing people's work and uh, gave me some information so so I could comfortably say with that experience there uh, of uh, clairvoyance objective if you like outwardly I have a gentleman with me here loosely described him because I could see him clearly like you and I can see each other, and spoke about his job, spoke about his relationship, and then just said, and I want to talk to you, and pointed to the lady. Bless her, she broke down crying because it was so accurate. Uh, it, was, it was accurate because, not because, oh, well, you're a good medium, Tim, because I've accepted over the years, as every medium and psychic should, those six senses, that they are naturally part of my sensitivity and awareness and perception just like the physical senses that are a part, a part of me and when we can do that it overcomes so many challenges uh, within our mediumship it really does good point jack good point 
and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a great believer as you're talking about the natural uh, aspect in it like when we're not looking for, for our physical senses we just have them and sometimes Absolutely. I've seen with students that that they've uh, uh, they have a hard time to accept that all these senses is a nat natural thing to us. Yeah, absolutely. And I think until until an individual who, who's working in a spiritual way, again, immaterial to if it's on a psychic level or medium mystical level, until an individual can truly accept and surrender to the spiritual senses, you you have an you have a, a situation where people look but they don't see yeah so for example they say oh i know your 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 i know your father was a, a farmer because i can see him in his tractor but they're looking at the tractor but they're not seeing the tractor if that makes sense yeah. a bit like sometimes when we're tired and the tv's on and we're watching a film but we're just blankly looking at the screen of the tv but not really engaging with the film or taking on board what we're seeing uh and, and so when that student says, I know your father was a farmer because I can see him in his tractor. If as a tutor, I said, well, what kind of tractor was it? What make a tractor? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, uh, was, exactly. it a, was it a modern tractor or an old tractor? Oh, I have no idea. Mm. Because they, 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 they've looked at it, but they haven't seen it. They, they, they listen, but they don't hear. They touch, but they don't feel. They sense, but they don't feel, if, that make, if, that, if you understand that. That, that. I, I do, and I'm hope of hopefully people out there understand that as well, because it, it it is really this as you yeah as you're talking about. We all know this sensation when we are looking at the telly. We probably all do that from from time to time, and we just we we we, we see every picture, every move, everything, but we didn't re don't really take anything of it in. Absolutely, it's like we're going into kind of older state or something, just letting letting it pass uh, uh, that way absolutely so definitely yeah. yeah i know i have a gentleman with me here i ain't got a clue if he was tall or short or large or slim i just i just know it's almost like you're aware of them through the perimeter of your clairvoyance yeah uh, which is sad because we're not allowing ourselves like i did when i spoke about going out in the garden i just took a moment to breathe in to be at one with the garden and sadly we're not seeing that far too often with our mediums um, and there's so much information there that they can uh, uh, um, for example quite often you, you, again I know you and I have uh, had this experience there Jack um, uh, quite often uh, someone will say a, a medium will say I have your father here I know he worked in a factory because I'm standing outside the factory looking at the big gates looking at this factory this large building well most factories that i know will have the name of the factory on the gates yeah and they never give the name no i, I did a demonstration here in england uh, the uh, uh, about two weeks ago jack and i had a and i had a, a gentleman who was a um a mechanic and it turned out to be he was the, he was the boyfriend of my client and uh, his message was about my client communicating with her mother. Her mother was very ill and they've not been speaking. Hey, you need to get together and communicate a bit more. And he started that subject matter of communication off by giving his telephone number. And yeah. the, la the lady's jaw, as I gave it, she obviously knew it because she was his partner. Her jaw just, just dropped and hit the floor. She said, my God, he's got the telephone number. And a couple of people came up and said, I can't believe that you got the telephone number. And my answer was, but that gentleman in the spirit world knew his telephone number. It's not hard for him no. to get the telephone number. The challenge comes for me to accept listening or uh, clairvoyantly or looking and seeing clairvoyantly the numbers that he's offering up so that I can offer it to my client. That's, that's the challenge. It's not hard for the spirit world to give it it's hard for the medium to accept it and when we can learn that through those senses it, it, it so will elevate the standard of our mediumship throughout the world yeah 
Definitely, definitely. Uh, should, I think we maybe should say hello to a few more people that have joined us Absolutely. here. And encourage um, I can see we have Donna Perry Hark in there. We have Solvay. We have Lola. Uh, we have Yede. I know you know Yede. She's on one of your online classes. Lovely lady. Uh, we have Susan Brown, Julie Pierce. We have uh, Bold Grace. Uh, and Tony, Tony Hawkins. Oh, good Tony. A another bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely medium. Um, so, and, and we have Heidi, we have Freda Soul. Uh, uh, so, uh, hi to er everybody out there. Um, so, I don't know, there's a, a couple of comments and questions. Uh, do you want that one now? Let's do it, Jack. Let's do it. So, we have uh, Boril says, is it is it normal that uh, you experience a uh, deep crisis before your psychic uh, uh, your psychic um, senses uh, is been awakened? Uh, mine, mine was mine open. Uh, it was like my opening uh, uh, was after an, uh, a near death uh, experience woke me up. So that's a wonderful um, uh, question. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Forgive me, I'm not going to try and uh, pronounce your name. I wouldn't do it justice, but uh, thank you very much for the question. So my answer to, to that is uh, um, not all. That is not. That's not always the case. I would say that a lot, uh, uh, quite a lot of mediums, their their spiritual um, ability becomes activated because of some kind of trauma in their life. For example, losing a loved one, yeah, and and you mentioned there that you had a, a near death experience, uh, and and so there are lots of mediums who will talk about those types of events in their life that activated their not necessarily their mediumship, but their the the, the, the psychic faculties that is, if you like, the the foundation of one's uh, mediumship. And what we I think what we have to remember here is. That, that those psychic faculties that both Jack and I are talking about, those spiritual senses, because um, they are psychic faculties, are extensions, for want of a better word, of your sensitivity, which you then perceive through the faculties of the mind. Uh, uh, um, but because they are extensions of your sensitivity, um, when you have a, a traumatic experience, like a near-death experience, like losing a loved one, of course, your sensitivity, there are shifts uh, and peaks and troughs within your sensitivity because of the emotional traumatic experience that it, that it is. So it, so it can, in some people, activate that is already there laying dormant. And, 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 and because it's uh, the shift, on an emotional level, maybe on a spiritual level, but most certainly on a sensitive level, it will activate these senses, which then will will allow when you are in the company of spiritual energy, either on a psychic level or on a medium mystical level, it will allow you to use them because it's awoken them, if you like. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, yeah, I, be, I, be, I believe so. Um, and if, it's, if I can just add to it, sometimes, uh, or let's say instead of uh, sometimes uh, the awakening the senses, uh, becoming aware of the senses. Yeah, no, yeah. Because I believe this, we, we have the senses from we are we are born. Absolutely. Uh, 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 so it's more. To me, about it was for, for my um, for my good self uh, becoming more aware of my senses because yeah. I know I always have had them when I yeah. look back, you know. But but it was just a, a change of perspective uh, in my life. So it wasn't so it wasn't the traumatic experience that you went through, Jack. Uh, it it was a uh, it was passing a, of a love uh, of a loved one that okay. changed that per perspective. But but you know it it was like. 
I know, and I know when I'm looking back uh, uh, now, looking back before that time, the senses have been active for all my life. Uh -huh. Just my awareness of them and what it really was, I, uh, I was experienced uh, before that. Um, I mean, so I, it was that change of perspective uh, uh, towards the, the senses that changed yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. Your relationship with them changed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, there was no, I mean, I didn't have, a, I've never had an easy life when I was a child, but uh, there was no, there was no death of anybody. There was no traumatic experience like there was with our lovely lady who's asked the question there. Um, uh, just I, 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 when I look back, I remember having uh, uh, interacting with the spirit world, certainly from the age of seven. I, ha I have memories of that, but I can't remember a moment where I began to become aware of the spiritual senses. As you say, they were just always there. They were just yeah. always there. Uh, and, and I look back, certainly as far back as the, the age of seven, when they were just in place. Uh, so for some, it's fair to say that um, um, tra traumatic experiences in their life will act activate them or allow you to become allows them to become more heightened. Which, as Jack said, there allows you to become more aware of them, which changes your relationship with them, or they're just naturally there for some people. Um, you know, there's this phrase, which is another a discussion, another discussion for another time. Are mediums born or are they are they developed? Um, and, and I think uh, for some, it's it, it's just there. It's just there. Yeah, very good question. Thank you very much. Yes, and we have a comment here from uh, Yede. It says, "I have trained here in the co Corona era." Uh, to sharpen my senses by sitting in the nature and strengthen my uh, abilities in addition to enjoying getting out out in the air. And it has definitely uh, helped all my senses. Uh, mediumship and, and, and my cleansing of my human root inside. And we need to enjoy the process and the path to development. Uh, well, well, well. I, I agree with her on many different levels there. Uh, yeah. She's a lovely lady, and uh, I know her well, as I'm sure you do, Jack, who well, I've come to yeah. know her over the last couple of years. Uh, she's a lovely lady. And uh, there's several points that she makes in her statement there that, that we can do nothing but agree with. So first of all, uh, she highlights there the relationship with Mother Nature and how it will activate um, those, those senses there. I, I would say... If you allow it, if you allow it, you know, you could walk through a park and be ignorant of the beauty of that park. And the next day you could walk through the same park. And, and if you like, your heart, your awareness can be open to the beauty of that park. So, so I think it's about allowing yourself, surrendering to these experiences, uh, to, to allow yourself to be at one with things like Mother Nature, the, the beauty of your family, you know, um, uh, the beauty of, of, of the town that, that, that you live in and your surroundings. Uh, and I know you, most certainly you have a beautiful country there in Denmark. Uh, I've took walks with Jack in many different um, uh, fields and, 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 and uh, woods and uh, forests. And we have a beautiful story about one, but I think that's maybe for another time. Um, that includes fairies. Um, but uh, a beautiful country you have. Uh, and if you can allow yourself to be at one with that, it most certainly will activate that, not only through the physical senses, uh, but through the spiritual senses there. I, I do an exercise there where um, I take students out into uh, like a field or, or the woods, and uh, you blindfold one of them, and then you, you the, the person who's blindfolded, obviously you give them a partner, a guide if you like, and their guide will lead them through different parts of a field or, or a forest. And it's amazing what you can see with your eyes closed. Yeah. And how attuned, very quickly, how attuned you become. Um, uh, Yetta said something else there about um, allowing yourself to enjoy uh, the development, the journey. And far too often, and I don't know about you, Jack, but far too often, 
I meet students and are, uh, who I know are, who are developing their spiritual abilities, and I, and I will say, how, how is it going for you? Oh, it's tough. Oh, it's hard work. Oh, it's not easy. Oh, I'm struggling. And I, and I say, well, then go home. Go home and be a plumber. Go home and be a, a housewife. Go home and be a nurse. Go home and be a, be, be a teacher in the main, mainstream school. Uh, because your mediumship should not be a struggle. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But enjoy, as, as, as Yetta said there, enjoy the journey. Enjoy. It's, it's not a crime to fail at an experience. Oh, I didn't get that exercise that Jack asked me to do. I didn't get that done correctly. It doesn't matter. What did you learn from the experience? What did you learn from the journey? And enjoy it. Enjoy it. If, if, you, if you achieve, if you fail, it's, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not about being a superstar or not, as the case may be. It's about having the experience through the spiritual senses. And each time you do, you will empower them. And I think it might be worth mentioning, uh, I know from my own experience, but also from some of my students, that sometimes during the times where we can feel like our, our development is standing still, that's actually where our mediumship is growing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 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 and we don't really see it ourselves, but everybody else around us can often see it. They can see the how how the mediumship and our personality sometimes will grow and grow and grow with it but we are not able to see it ourselves because all we put our focus on is is the the things that it's not that easy but it's when it's not easy uh, uh, uh we are changing our, our our mediumship and if we're putting the right mindset in our it it will make our mediumship grow yeah absolutely and it's not only mediumship that will, that will uh, encourage that growth. Uh, most of the mediumistical growth will be done outside of the classroom, outside of the yes, mediumship. I don't know about you, Jack, but, you, you know, I, I've worked with students maybe for a couple of years and then they say, oh, I need to take time out. I, I don't know. One of my parents is ill, for example. So I yeah. need to take time out. And they step back from the class for maybe a year. And then, then when, when they come back, you can see this growth in them. You yeah. Know, they've done nothing with the spirit world, yet they've done a lot with themselves. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's encouraged and brought about uh, a, a, an illumination in their soul, in their spirit, that so adds to and enhances their, their relationship with the spirit world. But yeah, definitely, I'm totally agreeing with, with that. And... and... I know uh, you as well as myself. We have had some loss of some close loved ones that we don't uh, want anybody to to experience. Uh, uh, but I can say for myself, what what it has done to me as a person has definitely affected my my, my mediumship as well in good and bad. Yeah, if I can yeah. put it that way. Yeah, I know, uh, and, and I, I think maybe we need to be open for our visitors, Jack, but. Sadly, both you and I have lost daughters to the spirit yes. world, two beautiful souls in the prime of their life. And sadly, uh, um, I know your, your, your lovely daughter, I met her only once, but a lovely lady, um, went be uh, uh, because of a long illness where my daughter went uh, quite suddenly. Uh, it was a long illness, but she, she went quite suddenly. And, and we are members of a club that we don't want to be members of. Parents Definitely. and children. But I don't know about you, Jack. But we come back to that question that Our Lady asked about, you know, trauma um, bringing, bringing the senses, uh, activating the senses. Yes. And, and your, your phrase about, well, maybe it's about having, having a different perspective of them. Um, I know that when I do readings or demonstrations that involve uh, children or young adults, and I'm giving the parents, and the parents are my clients, my re the recipients. There, there seems to be something, for me, there seems to be something extra within my mediumship uh, that empowers it, uh, that, that elevates it, the quality of it, the presence 
the personality of the spirit comes through just that little bit more uh, illuminated. I, I, and I think it's because of the experience I've had, uh, the horrific experience that I've had of losing a daughter to the spirit world. I don't know how you feel about that, Jack. Uh, <clears throat> I know f through the process, I was, was struggling a lot, both, both, both with myself and my mediumship and, and everything. But it like I feel like in that process, I got closer and closer to myself, uh, got a better understanding of myself, my own emotions, my own uh, uh, thoughts, my... Uh, and I think that through that process, uh, and especially after uh, after her passing, I have valued so much of what I have gained from that. Mm -hmm. So even though it was a, a, a really hard uh, journey, of course, of course. it has been been such a beautiful journey as as well, as you said. I, I the growing experience. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and and an, and an experience of the, and a change of how I look on uh, on the physical life as well as the this kind of the, yeah. the life. You know. So I don't know about you, Jack. Uh, it, uh, what 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 also it's done to me is <laughs> is if I give a sitting a reading uh, to somebody, and I bring through their child. Yeah, I can tell very easy with my client if they're ready to accept their child from the spirit world or yeah. not. Yeah, um, and if I can share a story, I'll make it as brief as possible. I was working out in Switzerland and I'd finished, uh, I, I knew I had a sitting to do. Um, the lady where I was staying, where I was lodging, her friend of hers wanted a sitting. I, I, I didn't know the lady and um. I'd done a, cl uh, a class, I was doing several days days of teaching. On one, this particular day, I, I'd finished the class and my translator said, I'll drive you back to where you're staying. And I said, no, it's okay, I'd like to walk. I've got a sitting to do um, at 7.30. So I'd like to just clear my head. Uh, and this was uh, six o'clock. And as I left the building, clairvoyantly, objectively, I saw a young man standing outside the building. And he said, um, my parents are already waiting. And I said, no, no, no. It's only your mother who's coming to the sitting. And he said, no, my father's there as well. And they're already there waiting. And I said, well, well that's okay. Um, but if you can step back and come back later. And he said, tell my dad about the tractor. And... Uh, and I said, and he showed me a tractor when he was a young boy, maybe of about four years of age. So a, ch a child's tractor that you sit on and pedal. But he also then showed me a tractor that a farmer would use and him, the tractor rolling down a bank, uh, down the side of a hill. And that's how he died. Okay. But if you can step back now. And I walked back the 10 minutes to where I was staying. And lo and behold, as I opened the door, the lady who housed me said, um, the lady's already here and her husband's come with her. Oh, okay, that's that's fine. Um, they were a bit early, but but I knew they would be here because I've already been aware, I've been talking to their son. So I went into the room and I started the sitting and, uh, and I said, um, I'm glad you've come to the father because your, your son knew you were here and he wants to talk to you. And the gentleman's arms were, he was, he was very, I don't believe in your body language stops the energy at all, but I could see that he was somewhat, if you like, protecting himself emotionally through his body language. And I said, well, your son's asked me to talk about uh, a tractor, but in two different stories. And, and the gentleman's going, tractor? Tractor? No, no, no idea, tractor. I said, well, he's showing me a tractor on a farm and it rolling down the side of a hill and, and that's how he died. Tractor? No, 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 no. And the, and, the, and the lady, the mother, leant over and said, honey, you know he died on a tractor. 
the tractor accident. That's how he died. Yeah, but yeah, but this guy could be just guessing. And immediately I could feel this man's energy. And what he was actually saying to me was, not you are wrong, Tim, because the information was actually correct. He was saying, please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me by giving me my son. Because if you give me my son from the spirit world, I have to then acknowledge that he's no longer here in the physical. Yeah. And there are some people who are not ready to receive that information, uh, that reality of the spirit world. And, and part of our spiritual senses, if we come back to that, part of our job as mediums on that psychic level is being aware how comfortable our client is, presentiently feeling how comfortable is our client to, to receive that information or not as the case may be. And it was clear that the wife had dragged him along, almost forced him into coming. Yeah. He didn't want to, but this is hurting me. I don't want to be here. You, you see what I'm saying, Jack? Yeah. Yeah, and I believe it's a great reminder about the responsibility we have Absolutely. as a medium, as psychics. Uh, uh, and because we are working with, it's our work is life changing. We are working with people, uh, with emotions, with thoughts, and everything. So we can change people's life, and yeah. really have to be aware of that respons responsibility. Uh, yeah. Not only in that moment where, or well, maybe we can hurt them, but also when, when they leave us, yeah, the I thoughts, think. the emotions they are leaving with. Uh, it's. Yeah. Um, you know, I know of uh, a student of Jeanette's, who, who, who is a wonderful medium, did a church demonstration and, and went to a young lady, I say young lady, maybe uh, late 20s, and gave her uh, a loved one from the spirit world, which she accepted. She accepted it, the whole message fully and, uh, and then proceeded in standing up, walking into the lady's toilets, and slitting her wrists you know where was sadly where was that lady mind and emotions when she was receiving that information that obviously tipped her over the edge to a point where she wanted to take her own life as you say we have a great responsibility not only during the sitting but what what is that recipient when they're carrying that information away from that sitting what are they going to do with it how is it going to affect their life? Because it should be empowering and enriching their life with the knowledge that life is eternal. But sadly for some, it can have a, a different effect, of course. Yeah. So, yes. Mm. Yes. And should we just use a quick moment just to say hello to a few people? I can I see we have Sue Townsend there. Hello, Sue. We have uh, Joan Kratovic. Uh, we have my Mayanna Buck Sonson. We have uh, uh, Pauline, we have um, Hill, we have, oh, Craig Morris Lovely uh, has, have joined us saying good, good evening. Um, and uh, I can see here there's a lovely question here from uh, uh, Yete uh, about the census. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, how do you feel uh, that it is a, 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 a psychic reading, and not a not? How do you see uh, feel the difference between when you're doing a psychic reading uh, compared to when 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 you have a spirit or a loved ones uh, or guide uh, coming in uh, when we when you receive a, a seating? Okay. So I, so I think the, the simple answer to that is um, it's a very individual experience. So if we come back to what we were talking about earlier, that the spiritual senses are an extension of our sensitivity. We are all uh, sensitive on different levels uh, as individuals. We are all unique in our in our uh relationship with our sensitivity so some some people will say i don't do emotions emotions are for wussies i don't do emotions mm. and, they're, and they're quite close and they're happy to go through life like that some people are very open and they and they and, and they and they embrace their emotions 
So, so uh, different people will perceive working on that on that psychic level in comparison to working on that medium mystical level very much in their through their own sensitivity. They're very therefore very much unique to their own experience. I can only tell you my 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 perception of when I work both on the psychic level and on the medium mystical level. And I hasten to say I see them both as beautiful crafts. Uh, but for me, when I work um, uh, on a psychic level, it's not supported by an intelligence, an external, a discarnate intelligence. So it's just fact, a bit like reading a book, if you like, you're reading the energy through, the, through these spiritual senses. And so it's very one dimensional, very flat, very lifeless. When I'm working with the spirit world, it's alive. It's alive. There's an intelligence that is very much a part of the very makeup of that information. There's a personality. There is a presence and it's alive. So it is very much more than just one dimensional. There are many facets to that interaction for me. That's how I experience it. I don't know about you, Jack. Uh, very similar, very similar. Uh, and uh, I know uh, yet just uh, uh, have uh, put in, in that comment as well that she kind of feels sick, uh, like that somebody is, is putting around with her energies, or uh, how to say it, uh, when when they're doing a psychic reading on on her. Uh, um, I believe. Uh, we have to be aware when we are working as mediums or, or psychics, uh, uh, where where we actually are, are getting the information uh, as well. Not that one, and as, as you said, one is not better than the other, but but because of difference uh, uh, and the intelligence uh, from from spirit. Uh, we sometimes I don't know about you, but I know sometimes I realize that people think that they are working with spirit where they actually are reading the recipient mm. re and reading the recipient's memories of of the loved one uh, yeah i agree jack yeah but 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 don't have uh, that uh, communication have that intelligence from from spirits yeah um i i think it's i think it's about uh part it should be uh part of your development and through through that development, coming to have an understanding of when you're working on the psychic and when you're working mediumistically. So it's about spiritual education, really. Uh, pardon me. Um, sadly, we live in a a world where everything is instant. You know, you you, you, you hey, we have drive through. Um, uh, you, you know, you can go and get your evening meal and, and not have to leave your car. You can just drive through. Uh, there's different famous burger bars where you can just drive through, pay your money, and within two minutes you've got your food. We live in a very instant world now where everything is produced for you immediately. And sadly, a lot of people are taking that approach into their mediumship. And if they would just give themselves time to, to, to study their craft and have an understanding of it, through this, through this sensitivity, through these psychic uh, and spiritual senses, uh, that they would they would have a greater understanding of when they're working on the psychic, when they're working on the medium mystical. Uh, and as you rightfully say, Jack, you, we're not saying here that one is better than the other. We're just saying understand your craft, understand yeah. your spiritual science. And, and if I can just come back to something that uh, uh, Yetta has just said there about feeling uncomfortable somewhat when people are reading her on a psychic level. And that's just where her, her sense of, she, she, she's having an, she's beginning to have an understanding there of, of her own energy and when it is affected by, by external energies. For example, somebody's energy uh, impinging on your energy to read it on a psychic level there. Uh, and you can feel that uh, for some people, intrusion into their energy M uh, many times and i'm sure you've had this experience jack when you're demonstrating on a public 
uh, arena there, and you and I have done many demonstrations together. Yeah. Uh, um, um, and you can feel somebody observing your energy uh, at where they don't quite know their craft and their, their energy or their awareness, for want of a better word, is impinged, is inside your energy, as opposed to observing it from uh, the perimeter, if you like, outside. They've, they've stepped into your energy. And it can affect things because it can become confusing. There's a, there's a, there's a new energy inside my energy, uh, the observer there. Um, uh, and, and it's just an awareness through your sensitivity, probably on the clairsentient level there, you're sensing this, this, this new ingredients in your energy there. And for some people, as yet a kind of touched on there, it can be somewhat disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it can. And as you said, while you're standing on a platform or something, somebody in, in from the congregation is tapping into you. It can be. I have tried to stand on the platform and said, "Please stop that." To to, to a person, you know, if you can't, uh, you know, step out of my energy because you're really disturbing my work here. You know, absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I, I I agree one hundred percent. And and uh, it's very tempting, isn't it? It's very tempting for for the budding medium or psychic to sit at the back of a hall uh, and take their awareness into the awareness of the medium as they're interacting with somebody from the spirit world to see what's going on. I just want to see if I can get a better piece of evidence than the medium's got. You know, yeah. please, please, please don't do that. Please don't do no. that because you just spoil, you confuse things, you, you possibly spoil the evening mm -hmm. for everybody else. You know, and all you're trying, and, and the reason uh, or what's encouraging you to do it is simply the ego, that's all. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let no. the medium get on with their work. Yeah, and I, I guess, as you said, when you know your craft, like you and we, we, we can sit there, we can observe the energy without uh, disturbing it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? It's like standing out, outside the window, just look, looking in through the window and not going uh, uh, through the door to go, go into absolutely. to intact. That's act, uh, and that's. Um, very good way of putting it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I, I always say it's like standing outside uh, uh, um, the grounds of, of a building and you're looking from outside the other side of the fence. You're looking at yeah. the fence, but looking through a window is maybe a better way of putting it and without actually uh, opening the window and climbing into the building. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and that takes time to do that. And, and I, I, don't, I would always, encourage people to to meditate and do the different types of meditation because within the act of, of meditation and there are different types of meditation and i'll just name them we're not going to go into them because that's what this not what this evening is about but uh sitting in the power uh visualization meditation contemplation relaxation and um i, I would encourage you to do these different types of meditation because they will empower and very much strengthen the spiritual senses. Um, you know, encourage yourself to do meditations where you're, you're talking to, therefore you're listening to somebody from the spirit world. You're having a chat with somebody. You're seeing them. You're sensing their presence. Uh, um, you're listening to their, their input, uh, as indeed they're listening to your input. That will, in, that will really encourage the senses there. Uh, which, which normally, if you if you allow them to come naturally within the within the format of a meditation, and then you will naturally take them on board into your mediumship. There, I see that's another. Well, I believe that's another question, Jack. Oh yeah, you uh, basically. I just uh, saw that question uh, as you started talking about the uh, the meditation because the question the question is about. How can I, in my daily work, uh, develop my mediumship without clients? You just ask, uh, answer that. So, so yeah, absolutely. You know, think about, uh, and I'm sure Jack would be the first person to agree with me with this. Both Jack and I uh, run classes and, and, and in circles and things like that, groups. But as teachers and mediums, we are limited to our ability. 
We are limited to our ability. Yet if you take your awareness to the spirit world and allow yourself to be taught by the spirit world, there is no limitation. And they will come through the power of a meditation, through the, through the format of a meditation. The spirit world can come and teach you that that you need to, to empower and develop your mediumship. Somewhere along the line, you'll need to go and sit in a group with physical people where you do have to give a sitting to somebody. So you get that physical input and you get that response, those yeses and no's and I don't know's. Um, but um, there's no limitation with the spirit world on what the spirit world can give you, the experiences that the spirit world can give you. So spend time in the company of the spirit. How can you do that? Through, through the power of meditation. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, and um, Mariana, I can see you have put a few comments, but I'm not quite sure if I understand what you're writing there. Uh, but we are getting close to an end. We can just have a quick one here. Uh, it's for the soul says to me it's about uh develop uh yourself both emotional and mental some uh, uh as well as moral uh, and ethic uh the more you know yourself the, the better i believe that uh, uh, the ability to uh see the difference um uh, See the difference between being in the uh, uh, to be in the not physical world. How do you look at this? Yeah, I, I, again, I can only agree with her. Thank you for your for your statement there. I, I don't believe that that anybody should should start um, medium mystical development to become a medium. That should not be your goal. To develop your mediumship should not be uh, uh, the goal. Should not be to become a medium. It should be to become a better person. It should be to to empower, to feed, to nurture uh, your own spirit. Uh, and we do that through through mystical practices, psychic and medium medium mystical practices. There, uh, and to be in in the company of the spirit. Uh, your own spirit and discarnate spirit, the opportunity of self-development. And, and that, that doesn't mean we have to be saintly to be a medium. You know, we all have life's experiences. We all make mistakes from time to time. Some of them just small ones like, oh, I shouldn't have um, uh, at those, uh, eaten those onions for, for dinner. It's now disturbing me. Some of them life-changing uh, mistakes. And some of them um, are experiences that we are very proud of. Uh, we are human beings, and mediums are human beings, and psychics are human beings. Uh, and so, so we, we make and, and have life's experiences. And some of them positive, some of them not so positive. Uh, but as part of that journey, as part of that unfoldment of our, of our mediumship, we should also be, be unfolding and taking that journey of spiritual development. Uh, and again, I come back to meditation. Uh, and here we, we look at things like contemplation, where you would take a word, going into the quiet, going into the stillness of self, and taking a word like um, brotherhood, uh, uh, love, compassion, and just, just contemplating on that word. What does it mean to you? Uh, what is the value of, of, of that word? What are the strengths and the weaknesses of, of that phrase? And it will affect you in a positive way uh, and, and allow that unfoldment of your own spirit and spirituality to come about. You, you know, I, I often say, and I'm, so, I'm sure Jack will, will say the same to his students, how can you do justice when doing mediumship to someone who died of starvation if you've never been hungry yourself yeah how can you do do justice through your mediumship uh um to to uh somebody's long drawn out illness if you've never been ill yourself 
And in a very safe way, and I say this in a very safe way, be careful how you hear me here, in a very safe way, ordered way, you can experience life's experience through the power of meditation that will empower your mediumship, that will give you those experiences uh, that will, will enrich when you're being of service, either on a psychic level or being of service to the spirit world. So it, there has to be a, a, an element of uh, spiritual unfoldment. You can't stand and, and, and talk about love from the spirit world, uh, support uh, and, and, and love and light for everybody. And we're all brothers and sisters because we're all spirit. And then go away and, 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 and uh, rob a bank or something. You know, it, 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 it doesn't it doesn't add up. So and again, I say we make mistakes, but there has to be an element of spiritual development that gives support and empowers uh, your craft. Jack. Yeah. And I think uh, we're actually getting close to an end of this evening now. It's amazing how fast time goes when you're in good company. Mm -hmm. um so but before we end we'll just announce a few things uh because everybody out there if you want want to uh, experience uh, some of tim's teaching here in denmark uh, there's an opportunity in november the 11th to the 14th november there will be a, a course with tim uh and uh we will put it uh, in, the, in the comments here. Uh, there's the, the link for, for for the event. And Tim, next year. I'm really looking forward to next year. Next year, the two of us will have a, a tour de Denmark. Absolutely. Not a tour de France, that's this year, but a tour de Denmark will, will be next we year. Will be we, next year. Haven't got, we haven't got to do them on bicycles, have we? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 but we, we did a couple of years ago. It was planned uh, during the Corona, but what's what, what was canceled there, but we will do it next, next year. Uh, and that will be in June, uh, from the start of June. Uh, and we will be on Sealand. We will be on Foon. We will be in Jutland. So we will come around, uh, around the country, the two of us, with courses, with demos and sittings and things like that. Do come and say, us. Do come and say hello to us. Yes. So and I believe there will be more lives uh, where you will be involved as well. We have done that a lot before, and I'm sure we'll do that in the future as well. So the link is... Uh, um, the link is uh, in the in the comments, so please, please, please go and see that. But I think I will here will say thank you very, very much, Tim, well, uh, for you. joining this uh, evening for the Danish Spiritualist as as your association, uh, um, and thank you again to Lawrence and uh, Pool Christian Spiritualist Church to help us out with this uh, live here. So it's been such a pleasure, Tim. Looking forward to see you soon. Jack, it's always a pleasure being in your company. And I love the people of Denmark. It's always uh, good to hang out with you, be good people. So I've enjoyed the uh, the hour that we've spent together. So good night, everybody. See you soon again. Yeah. Just follow, follow pay, uh, our Facebook page and, and the website. So thank you, everybody, and good night.